Thank you, Brother Cooper. Uh, good morning to the few of us who are here this morning. I uh, want to thank those who are visiting with us. Uh, you are our honored guest, and I hope and trust that you will be blessed this morning. Uh, the reason why we have counselors and uh, we have police chaplains, the reason why we have uh, therapists and um, motivational speakers is because society understands the need for uh, mental care. They understand the need to address uh, situation where we might become burdened uh, psychologically because mentally we can go through stuff because of life. Uh, uh, a person who goes to war and comes back is, uh, mentally and psychologically they are affected the effects of war can be very daunting because of the trauma and what they have absorbed. And equally in our life as parents and children, we go through stuff. Um, uh, parents struggle with stuff, struggle to make sure that the bills are taken care of, the light and the water is on and the insurance keeps going they make sure these things are on and if there are circumstances where illness arises uh, it can affect the way how they do work it can affect the way how they even communicate it can affect spouses and marriages it may even spill over in on times uh, where children are not able to understand what the parents are going through because it could be the lack of communication or it could be just simple frustration. And so we resort sometimes to therapy. Sometimes we resort to even going on anxiety pills. Uh, because we are unable to treat with or care properly the psychological effects and trauma that life brings on us. And this morning, I hope and trust that you all are leaning on God, that you are leaning on a spiritual being. Uh, therapists and uh, counselors in different field as proved as sought uh, according to knowledge statement that those who depend on a divine spiritual being that they are better able to cope and manage through difficult circumstances they are better able to navigate that all of us are going to have the same effects and they are we're going to have the same kind of experience towards trauma. But when they, the study has shown that those people who depend on their God, depend on the higher being, seems to come out better, seems to be able to manage better uh, because of the divine uh, help and what they have draw on or depend on during their circumstances. So this morning I want to have a conversation with you. I want to talk about embracing God's purpose in suffering. Embracing God's purpose in suffering. I'm going to be um, looking on some biblical examples I'm going to be talking from some personal experiences and how I'm able to navigate and how men of old and men who have gone before us and who are still journeying are able to manage 
because of who whose they are and who they are depending on. My beloved brothers and sisters, as we gather here today, let us go into the profound and often perplexing topic of suffering. Uh, every single human being are going to experience some form of problems and trouble. If you live long enough, and if you have at least one sense that you are able to depend on, you are going to experience some form of hurt, some form of discomfort. Human existence, suffering is a thread that weaves its way through every life touching each of us in unique and profound ways. Yet as followers of Christ, we are called to navigate this journey with a perspective that transcends the temporal and embraces the eternal. Today, let us embark on a journey through scripture to uncover the secrets or the profound truths that illuminates God's purpose in our suffering. And the main, one of the main topics and subtopics is understanding the nature of suffering. Understanding the nature of suffering. And I parallel it and, parallel it and align it as death is never new because the, the, losing a loved one will impact you in some way, shape, or form. And so suffering of any kind is never easy. The universal, 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 universality, sorry, of suffering, according to Job chapter 5 and verse 7, yet a man is born to trouble, yet a man is born to trouble, as surely uh, sparks fly upward, explaining from the dawn of humanity, suffering has been an inherent part of the human experience. Whether physically, emotionally, or spiritually, suffering touches the lives of people from every walk of life, transcending culture, socioeconomic, and geographic boundaries. Example, consider the testimony of the saints throughout history from the martyrs of the the early church to the persecuted believers in modern times. These stories bear witness to the universal reality of suffering in the lives of God's people. What did Job do to experience what he did? The purpose of trials and tribulation, if we look in James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, the Bible says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. While suffering may appear senseless and random, while suffering, I'm going to say that again, while suffering may appear senseless and ran, random, scripture, scripture reveals that God can use even the most difficult trials for his redemptive, redemptive purposes. Trials serve as a refining fire that purifies our faith, strengthens our character, and ultimately comforts us to the image of Christ. Reflect on the life of Joseph in the book of Gen Genesis. Joseph was sold into slavery by his own brothers, falsely accused and imprisoned. Joseph endured years of suffering and hardship, yet in the end, he recognized God's so sovereign hand at work, declaring, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. I do not know if you are able to process certain things, but let me say this. If you are not a spiritually inclined or if you are not embracing God where spirituality is, spirituality is concerned, 
suffering or whether it be mentally, emotionally, or financially, or otherwise, can be consuming. Can be consuming. Have you ever, um, in your lifetime, uh, are going through some stuff? It could be a financial um, um, uh, problem or an emotional one. And because you are a part of a community, not just a part of a community, but a community that is very supportive, a community that is understanding, a community that is framed by God's spirituality, framed by God's scripture, framed by his instruction. And the fact that someone knows about what you are going through and you relate what you are going through, God places it at, up on their heart to assist you in your circumstances and help you because of what you are going through or what God has placed on their heart. How do we respond to suffering with faith and trust? Let us investigate and uh, try to get some meaning to responding to suffering with faith and trust. Trusting God's sovereign sovereignty in Scripture, let us turn to Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Romans 8 and verse 28. And we know that all, in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. In the midst of our pain and suffering, we are called to anchor our faith in the unshakable truth of God's sovereignty. Even when circumstances seem dire and hopeless, we can trust that God is working all things together for our ultimate good and his eternal purpose. <clears throat> Consider the unwavering faith of Job, who meets unimaginable suffering declared Though he slayed me, yet will I trust him. You remember the circumstances of Job and what led him to curse the very day that he was born? The Bible says that while Job was sitting, there are several events happening. And all of Job's um, children died. As a matter of fact, he lost all of his what? Of his wealth. But the Bible says, even though his wife looked on his condition and instructed him as to what to do, the Bible says he tore his garment and he fell down and he what? And he worshipped. He never one day cursed God. In every situation, you are going to find that you are going to go through tremendous hardship and tremendous suffering. But the way how God tells us to respond is going to tell, uh, is going to explain to the world and to yourself the type of character that you are. How you respond to an event, how you respond to lost, how you respond to death. He's going to tell of the relationship that you have between you and your what? And your God. And so my relationship, when hardship comes, when financial burden comes, when mental problem comes, when emotional problem comes, what do I do? You know what I do? I reach out to my community. I reach out to my brothers and sisters and I ask them to pray for me. I go a little further. I reach out to people who are faithful in the church, who are confidential. That means they are going to keep what you are going through and your struggles that you are going through. And they are going to pray for you and they are going to what? Encourage you. So the way how you respond is going to tell the person, the character of that person. How are you made? Who are you relying on? And so Job, what did he do? He fell down and he worshipped God. He never cursed God. Finding hope in the midst of despair. We must look for hope. 
Hope is that ingredients that binds us with the realities of the Almighty God. Faith is believing in what you cannot see that will eventually come to pass. Hope is saying, yes, with God all things are possible. God can take me through this storm. Finding hope. In Psalms 34 and verse 18, Psalms 34 and verse 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Have you ever been crushed in spirit? Even in our, in our darkest moments of despair, we can find hope and comfort in the presence of our loving and compassionate God. He draws near to the broken hearted, offering solace and strength to sustain us through the storms of life. Reflect on the testimony of a persecuted Christian throughout history who despise facing unimaginable suffering and persecution, from covering courage and hope in the sustaining grace of God. Their unwavering faith stands as a testament to the transformative power of God's presence in the midst of suffering. Have you ever heard about The three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now Israel was led away into captivity and they were in Babylon. Babylon wanted them to worship their false gods and eat their food offered to idols. But the Israelites would have none of that. But there were three Hebrew boys. And God provided for them in a miraculous way because they did not partake of the meat, but what they were eating were what? Vegetables. And even they were, though they were eating vegetables, their, 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 their demeanor and their facial expression and their body language and their skin tone, it was firm and they didn't lose any weight and they weren't weak. God sustained them. But they weren't worshipping as they ought to, according to the decree and the laws of the Babylonian land. And so eventually they said, listen, because you refuse to bow down and worship the idols, we are going to throw you into the what? Into the fire. And the Bible says they were thrown there and they, were, they saw a man as a son of God, who is Jesus Christ, walking, and they were not harmed. Maybe they were saying, well, Chris, uh, isn't this unrealistic? Understand, if, for some of you who were here um, last week, I preach about the heavenly rest. I preach about the eternal world. Um, the eternal home. I preach about the everlasting kingdom that we are going to be changed from mortal to what? Immortal, immortality. That we are not going to die as Christians and we are going to live forever. And understand the significance of that. That once we trust in Jesus Christ regardless of what is happening in our lives that we are going to be with him. God will be able to sustain us. The transformer learning and growing through suffering. This transformative power of suffering in the Romans chapter 5 through um, 3 through to 5, not only so, but we are we also glory in our suffering because we know that our suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Far from being meaningless or futile, suffering has the potential to cultivate spiritual growth and maturity in the lives of believers. As we endure trials and tribulation, God uses them to produce 
perseverance, per perseverance, character, and ultimately a deep-seated hope that transcends our circumstances. Consider the Apostle Paul, who despite facing countless hardship and persecution, testified to the transformative power of suffering in his own life. He understood that his trials were not in vain, but served to deepen his dependency on God and strengthen his witness for Christ. I don't know about you, brethren and friends, but think about it. Have you been, ever been in an athletic meet? I see the um, Harden. They just won the Div Division Two uh, championship. You heard about it? I don't know if you heard about it. Football championship. But while I got the opportunity to observe the team, they had to practice hard. They go through many trials. They went 15 games undefeated. But during that 15 games undefeated, there were practices. There were many of them whose foot was in cast. It was very what? Painful going through those hard times, tackling and running those yards. There were some of them who had to sit on the, the sideline because they picked up an injury or an injury. But they kept what? Going. And, and, and they fought through all of the hardship. They fought through all of the, the different circumstances. And at the end, they became what? Champions. You see, during these hard times and discomfort and, uh, um, and giving up their time and going through all of these trials and tribulation, they did not what? Give up. The trying times and the hardship. If you want something, you gotta go through the pain. You gotta go through the difficult times. You gotta go through some stuff for you to enjoy the victory. To enjoy the end goal. It was good for me in Psalms 117, verse 71. It it said it was good. For me to be afflicted so that I may learn your decree. Suffering has a way of stripping away the distractions and illusions of this world. Leading us to a deeper understanding of God's truth and his ways. Through our trials we are invited to draw closer to God. Seeking his, his wisdom and guidance in the midst of our pain. Consider the life. Consider the life of the Apostle Peter, who through his own experience of suffering and failure gained a deeper understanding of God's grace and faithfulness. His journey from denial, you remember he denied Jesus, to restoration served as a powerful reminder that God can use even our most painful experiences to teach us valuable lessons and draw us close to himself. In my conclusion, in my conclusion, you are going to have pain and suffering in your life regardless you, you believe God or not. You are going to go through stuff. But as I have said before, that clinicians and counselors and those who serve in the field of mental health have come to the conclusion that those who has God in their lives seems to navigate life at a greater ease or be able to overcome some stuff. To overcome abuse, to overcome addiction, to overcome trauma, it seems they are able to do this with greater ease. As we bring our exploration of suffering to a close, let us take heart in the profound truths we have uncovered 
Though suffering may be an inevitable part of our earthly journey, it is not without purpose or meaning. Through the lens of scripture, we can see that God is at work in the midst of our pain, using it to refine, strengthen, and ultimately draw us closer to God. As we continue on our journey, may we cling to the promise that our suffering is not in vain, but is leading us towards an eternal glory that far outweighs our present trials. May we embrace God's purpose in our suffering with faith, hope, and unwavering trust in his suffering goodness and love. We have to be intentional in drawing to scripture. We have to be intentional in depending on God. And so, understand your freedom today. You have free will to do just about anything. But I say to you, if you have tried everything else, while you are going through some form of suffering, while you are going through some difficulties, it, it, can, it may be just about anything, speaking to your peers, understanding someone, understanding your parents, understanding why this is happening um, this time, that you are able to find some form of consolation when you uh, address and touch scripture, when you seek and, uh, understanding from a spiritual pers perspective, when you seek understanding from the divine wisdom of God, which is pure, that we, we understand we are not able to work out everything on our own. We are not able to seek comfort on our own. That when we draw from divine information, when we draw from scripture, we have some form of understanding. And the way how we respond, the way how we respond to trials, the way how we respond to suffering, the way how we respond to trauma tells of our character and our affiliation with the Almighty God. If you are not a Christian this morning, God is saying, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Matthew chapter 6, verse 32 to 33. He said, Come repenting, come confessing. And be a part of God. And that with God will comfort you. While you journey. On this earth. I hope and trust that. You, something was said this morning. Something was said this morning. That you'll be able. To continue your journey. And your journey will be with some form of ease. Because. You are leaning. On the everlasting arms. As we stand. And sing.